Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have some really fun, sweet summer DIYs for you, all using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I went with a fruit theme, and the first DIY that we're going to do is to build a tear tray. I thought it would be fun to try to build my own tear tray. I've never done that before, so I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could do it with just supplies from the Dollar Tree. So what I'm gonna use is two of the large wood rounds from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree to make the base of our tear tray. I want it to be like thick. And so I thought that if I put the wood beads in between the two pieces, I can make a nice thick base. Now, what we're going to have the tear tray look like is a watermelon tear tray. I thought that would be really fun. So I thought I could use these napkins from the Dollar Tree in their summer section, the watermelon ones, and decoupage that onto our tear tray. So this is a two layer napkin. So once you unfold it, you still have to separate the layers. Um, if you're going to Mod Podge, it's going to make things way easier on you because these are very delicate anyway, so you want it to be as easy as possible. And it's the perfect size to cover the large wood round. So this is gonna be the base of our tear tray. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put a thin, very thin coat of Mod Podge all over one of the wood squares. And then I am going to lay the napkin on top. The reason I do thin, it's gonna go on smoother, um, with less bubbling, less chances of tearing too, I think. Because um, again, the napkin's really delicate. Now, if you mess up, don't worry, you've probably got a whole package. If you pull it off soon enough, it's not going to be a big, big worry. But make sure your hands are really dry. There's no glue on your hands. And then just try to smooth it out the best you can. I did better on this bottom one than I did the top one. This one turned out really smooth. And I'm just making sure it's secure all over and that it's not going to come up. I'm not going to Mod Podge over it because I don't want um, to damage this at all. I think that's going to be enough adhesive for it. Now it's a little bit bigger than the wood round. So I'm going to make sure that it's really dry around the edges. So I'm just going in there with my heat gun and making sure that's dry. And then to cut off the excess napkin, I'm just going to use a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. And it comes off so easy and it's going to give me a perfect cut around the edges. Now it is kind of taking that dark green, uh, like watermelon rind off. And so I will um, go back and try to paint that on a little bit too. So that is going to be the top piece of the base. And then this wood round is going to be the bottom part of it. Because I want it to be a nice thick tear tray. Now these are the wood bead garland that they have at the Dollar Tree now. I actually got a whole case of these online because I didn't know if my store would ever get them in. And you know, they don't have them very often. They go pretty fast. And it's a larger bead than they used to carry last fall, but it's also a shorter strand. So it's gonna take two packages of this to go all the way around my wood round. So I want this to look like a wood beaded tear tray and so that that is going to give me this effect by gluing the wood beads in between the two wood rounds. I'm leaving them all tied together. That's going to help keep everything together and I'm um, leaving it raw wood for right now too. I am going to paint it but not until it's all glued down and not moving around like it is right now. So it'll just make it a little bit easier. So I'm just moving a section at a time and just using hot glue and gluing those down. That's about how far one package gets you and two packages fit exactly. I didn't have to take anything off or anything. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and start my second one. They kind of have them tied off in the end so they don't fall off, so you have to kind of loosen that. But then I just tied the two strings together, again, just to make it easier. Um, to put these on, I'm not going to have wood beads rolling all around. It's going to keep them in alignment and good spacing as well. And then we're just going to glue that down. And again, once I get um, it untangled there at the end, it's a perfect fit. I don't have to take anything off. Then once I have them all on there, I want to make sure that they're good and secure, that I didn't miss any of the wood beads. And so I'm kind of just checking them out. I also go around with my hot glue gun and I do a bead of hot glue on the inside where you can't see it, just to make sure that every bead is glued down. Now I'm gonna take the top piece that I decoupaged the napkin onto, and then I'm gonna do a bead of a hot glue all the way around the edges on the underside there. And we're gonna put this base together. I had so much fun building this tear tray. I can't believe I've never made one before, but it was definitely a hit. So we're gonna glue that on, and now we have the base of our tear tray. It kind of looks cool, natural like that, but I kind of want it to look like the watermelon, you know, outside of the watermelon, the rind. And then I thought like the little wood beads would actually like look kind of like little watermelons. So once I get that all cleaned up, I'm gonna go in and paint that all green. Um, and then I also wanna do um, some legs. These are the little wood snowmen from winter section at Dollar Tree. And I thought they'd make the perfect legs for this. You can use whatever you have. You can use wood beads, you can use Jenga blocks whatever you've got, but these are really pretty and using them upside down, you can't tell they're snowmen. I originally thought four would be enough, but I do end up using five. I'm gonna go ahead and paint them all. I think this color is called leafy green, just some color from Target that I kind of thought looked like the color of a watermelon. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint all five of the legs that color. And once I get all of the legs painted, then I'm gonna go in and paint all the wood beads around the side of that base. And I love these fruit um, napkins from the Dollar Tree. They're so cute. They have lots of different ones. So you wouldn't have to just do a watermelon when you could do other fruit as well. I think they have a lemon one. You know, they even had an avocado one for Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> So I'm using a chunky brush and just going all around the edges. That's gonna paint the outside of the wood rounds green and then also all the wood beads. And it allows me to get in between the little beads and make sure that I have good coverage. And this is definitely an easier way to paint the wood beads than having to unstring them and put them on skewers and all that kind of stuff to try to make them not turn. They're not going anywhere now because they're already all glued down. And, oh, you know, I really love how this tear tray turned out. I'll probably make another version of this someday and maybe we'll stay in the wood or try something different like that. That could be fun. I kind of want a white one as well. So maybe I can make a white one. It turned out pretty well. It's not as big as my other tear trays, but it's a decent size. So I'm just working a section at a time, making sure that I get everything covered until all the edges are green for my watermelon. Now I'm gonna use a little tiny brush and then I'm gonna paint that rind back on that I cut off around the edges of the napkin, that dark green, just by like working a section at a time and just kind of brushing out towards the edges. A watermelon rind wouldn't be perfect perfectly circular anyway. It would kind of just be there. And so this part's just really easy. Just doing a very thin band of that. You're still gonna be able to see that light green and the light white before you start getting to the pink and the red there on the watermelon. So it's very colorful. And we have a ring all the way around. And I think this turned out so cute. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and put the legs on the base of our tear tray. 
I did five. So I'm just trying to like evenly space those legs out where I think they should go, kind of like a star shape without measuring, just kind of eyeballing them. And then I'm just gonna attach them all to the bottom of our base with some more hot glue. I use Gorilla Glue hot glue. It works great for wood and projects like this, but you could always use wood glue if you had a little bit more time on your hands. <laughs> And we have them all glued down. So the base of our tear tray is done. And, and now we just have to work on, I need to find something to put on it to make the tear with another tear on top. So that is how that works. And you could even just stop there and use that as a watermelon tray. Okay, for the top tier, I'm gonna use these little wood rounds that I also found at Dollar Tree. They do have words on them, hello and welcome, but they are a smaller size, so I thought that'd be a perfect size for the top tier of our tear tray. And we'll just turn the words inside so you won't even know that they're there. And then I'm also gonna use, these are the wood beads um, left over from the fall. This is actually my last set of them. Those were longer from the Dollar Tree and a little bit smaller but you can use whatever you have. You can use the new ones, wood beads from Amazon, whatever you wanna use when you're making your tear tray. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the bottom tear tray, just hot gluing those around the edges. And again, making sure that I put hello and welcome on the inside. There's plenty of room on the perimeter of the circle for the wood beads without those words getting in the way. I'm not sure how hard those are to pop off. And we are just gonna glue that all the way around. This one didn't work out quite as perfect. It was a little crowded toward the end, so I did take an extra bead off. And so I had a little bit of spacing. I just had to kind of move them around to make sure they were evenly spaced. But nothing too noticeable there. And then once I get those all glued on, like I did on the bottom, I'm gonna go in with my hot glue gun and do a bead all the way around the inside to make sure that all of the wood beads are glued and that they stay down. And then I'm gonna glue on the front here where it says welcome, all the way around the edges. And we're gonna put the top tier for our tear tray together by gluing the beads onto that side as well and it sandwiches that in between. And now we have our top tier. So I'm going to decoupage this with a napkin, a watermelon napkin, just like I did on the bottom. So I am just making sure that it is ready to go. I got all the tags off of it and this is gonna take less of the napkin than before. Basically, we're gonna get like the pink and the red parts. And again, I'm going in with a thin layer of Mod Podge. I did get more wrinkles on my top tier, so I'm thinking maybe my layer of Mod Podge wasn't quite as thin as it was on the bottom. But go as thin as you possibly can. And again, just make sure that your hands are really dry. Sometimes I use like my little Cricut brayer for this as well. It is just very thin and I'm trying not to tear the napkin if I can. But I also wanna make sure that the edges are completely glued down too. So just smoothing that all out the best that I can, very lightly and making sure everything's glued down. Then I wanna make sure that it's really dry before I go in and start sanding the edges of the napkin off. I love decoupaging with napkins. I think it's really a fun way to personalize your projects. So again, just using that sanding sponge and it's gonna give you that perfect clean cut all the way around the top tier. And then I'm gonna do Kind of the same thing that we did on the bottom tier. I'm gonna paint the sides and all of the beads that green color that I used on the bottom to kind of make it look more like the watermelon rind again. 
And I'm just using some heat to make sure I can get that down as smooth as I can. And again, just using a chunky brush, any kind of brush that's gonna get you in between all the nooks and crannies there. And we're gonna paint that all the way around. Now on this one, on the napkin, I had to cut off like the white part and the like light green part and the green part of the rind. So I do go back in after I get the beads painted here and do a little bit of detail to kind of just make the top tier kind of look like a smaller watermelon slice than the one on the bottom. So we got those all painted green. It's looking good. If you do find some areas that you can't get into, a little teeny tiny brush will get into all those little spaces for you. And I'm just filling in any raw wood that I could see there. And then like I did before, I'm gonna go in and just kind of do a very thin line all the way around the edges of that green, kind of going in with a rind on the sides of our watermelon. And then again, I'm gonna try to paint the different colors that were, were on the napkin as well. So once I get the, out, the outside, like this medium green color, then this color I think is scallion. It's just a chalk paint that I had that I thought was about the right color. But any kind of like a pea green color would look really good here. And I'm just doing another thin circle around the inside of the green circle that I just put on there. And again, it's a watermelon. It's not supposed to be perfect. So just do the best that you can. And I'm just slowly working all the way around, just kind of pulling the brush towards myself to give just a little wedge brush stroke all the way around. And then again, there was also another color in there. Um, on the inside of that color was like a white color. So I'm just gonna use some white acrylic and a tiny brush, and I'm gonna go around and do another ring as well. Now, you don't have to give all these details, but I really wanted it to look realistic as I could because the napkin itself is really great. And so I thought these extra details really kind of took it up a notch. And just painting that all the way around. And uh, now I'm happy with it. I think it looks like a little watermelon. Now for the middle of our tear tray to hold the set second tear tray up, I'm gonna use one of these white candlesticks from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna kind of put it on there upside down to hold up the top tier, but I want it to kind of look like the inside of a watermelon as well. So I'm gonna take the tag off and paint this red. Now I'm using like acrylic, like in a candy apple red. It didn't give me great coverage because red's kind of hard to paint and it's an acrylic. If I would have used a chalk paint, it probably would have been a little easier, but no big deal. I'm just gonna, it's just gonna take two coats of the red acrylic. So I'm just going around all of the outside um, surfaces of the candlestick. I'm gonna leave the top and the bottom that white just because I think that the glue will stick to the ceramic better than it would stick to paint. So just going in, trying to get as good a coverage on there as I can. And I want this to look, you know, just like the inside of a watermelon. So not just red, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some seeds on there as well. So I thought I would have like the best control with just a black Sharpie. So I'm just going in and randomly putting little watermelon seeds all over the sides of the candle holder, just to give it another little fun touch for our watermelon tear tray. I would like to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to do all the YouTube things, like the video when you're done watching. If you could comment your favorite project below or just say hi in the comments. I love reading all of your all's kind comments. And if you know anybody that would like my video, feel free to share it. We are growing. We just hit 8,000 subscribers while I was out of town, so that was really exciting. Now, I didn't know if hot glue was going to be secure enough to put this all together, 
So I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue. I like to get the E6000 in these little tiny tubes because they always get clogged or get a hole in them or something crazy. So I'm just going around the outer edges where it's going to touch the most with that. Then I'm going to go on the inside with hot glue. There, I just want that hot glue to kind of like try to grab it and stick it for temporarily until that E6000 gets a chance to dry for a more permanent bond. So just trying to push that down into the base as much as I can to make sure that it is good and secure. And again, I did put that on there upside down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the top. I'm gonna do E6000 all the way around the edges and then hot glue inside of that. Trying not to mix the two glues together. But I want that short term, long term hold there. And I'm gonna go ahead and secure the top of our watermelon on our tear tray. And isn't this just adorable? I can't believe I made all of this with just supplies from the Dollar Tree. It is so cute and so unique and perfect for summer. And this is the final result. Isn't it cute? I love all the colors and all the details. I love the little seeds on the inside there and all of the wood beads. I do kind of think they give me the feel of watermelons. And this is how it looks. We are ready to decorate it. It's not a huge tear tray. And so I'm not going to need a whole lot to decorate it. I want this just to go on my shelf for summer. So I'm going to do a few little DIYs, summer and fruity stuff to go on there. So this is the first project. I'm going to use one of these little gnome luggage tags from the Dollar Tree. He's eating a piece of watermelon. I thought that would be perfect. And then I'm going to use one of these little burlap signs from the Dollar Tree. These are the misprint signs that they can't sell anymore, unfortunately, because I love these signs. They're so easy to pop the top sign off. And then you have a little burlap blank sign to do whatever you want with. Now, that is on there with nails instead of glue, so make sure you don't poke yourself. I just like to go in and nail all those little nails back in so it's not dangerous. And this little gnome fits perfectly. I love using luggage tags from the Dollar Tree. They're so cute and such a fun way to personalize a project. I'm going to go in and put glue on the little rectangle on the back that holds the little luggage tag and glue that on to our burlap sign. Now the only thing I don't like is that little slit there on the top that held the luggage tag. So I'm just going to take some Dollar Tree twine and tie just a very simple little bow. And that is going to be the perfect size to cover that up and it'll provide another little cute detail for our first decoration here for our watermelon tear tray. So easy and so cute. He's got sunglasses on. He's enjoying his summer eating a slice of watermelon. Easy peasy. Our first project is complete. Okay, I want to make some fruit wood blocks. So I got these wood blocks from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I'm going to do three wood blocks. And then I also got some of these little cell phone um, I guess like the poppet holders from the Dollar Tree. I got a watermelon and a lime. And I want to do three blocks, but I can only find two fruits. So we're going to make it work. The first thing I want to do is paint the blocks. So I want to do like a lime block. And so I thought this color scallion is kind of the same color as the lime poppet there. And so I'm going to go in and paint all six sides this color of green, and we're gonna have a cute little lime block for our tear tray. Now these little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree are small, but they are perfect for this size of a tear tray. I have been picking these up. This is the first time that I've used them. They are great, I love them. So I got that one painted green, and then I'm gonna go in and paint the next one candy apple red. <laughs> 
I'm just gonna go ahead and paint them all so they'll get a chance to dry. I was thinking like red, white, and green would look really good with my watermelon tear tray. And this red's gonna go great for the watermelon one. So again, just going in and painting all six sides. This raw wood is so easy to paint. One coat is all it's gonna take. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint the third one white. I'm gonna use some of those glass stickers that you see there to decorate the third one since I only had two of the fruit. So white will be a nice background to go behind one of those glass stickers. And again, just going in and painting it. This time I'm just using white acrylic, just what I had. And it paints just as well as the chalk paint did on that green one. And we have red, white, and green blocks. And these are so much easier than having to paint those like foam dice from the toy section that we've always had to use for the Dollar Tree for blocks. We actually have wood ones now, yay Dollar Tree. <laughs> Okay, so I got those all painted and dried and we can start building these little fruit blocks. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this little lime one out of its package, super cute. And you could put it all, all on there, the whole poppet and kind of have it like be like a 3D, but I kind of just want the lime. So if you pull hard enough, it does take a little effort you can pop that lime off the little plastic holder that pops out there and you're left with just the little green lime. And so it's the perfect size for this wood block. I'm just going to attach it with a little bit of hot glue. And that's the only side that I'm gonna decorate. That's gonna kind of be the visible side of the block. And we have our little lime block for a tear tray. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing with the red one. This is going to be our watermelon one. So again, we're just gonna open up this little pop socket. And getting a pop socket from the Dollar Tree is a great deal. I wonder how these would hold up. They were pretty sturdy when I go to take them apart. They were definitely um, wanting to stay on there. So again, I'm just gonna pull that until the watermelon pops off. Now we can glue that little watermelon to the front of the red block as well. And again, there's like a circle kind of indentation out there. These fit perfectly on these blocks. So we have our lime block and our watermelon block. Now on the white one, I wanna use some of these little glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. This one's got all kinds of like little summer stickers on there. It has one that says, I love summer which I kind of wanted to use. It was a little too big for the little wood block. It's pretty small. So I'm kind of seeing if it will fit and not quite, but there was another one on there that says enjoy summer with a little hibiscus and that would fit perfectly on the little wood block. So I'm just gonna peel and stick. I love these glass stickers. You know, I've been using a lot of these from the Shore Living line and stick that on there. And we have our three little blocks for our tear tray. I'm just gonna kind of stack those all together like a little fruit block stack. Okay, I wanna make a little sign for our tear tray. And I found this like enjoy summer. Um, oh, actually summer vibes is what it says. Little watermelon wind chime from the Dollar Tree. And so I don't need these extra pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of those. And that leaves me with the little wood sign. Now this is the perfect size for my tear tray. They also make this in a bigger sign with like the little markers and stuff. And, but this one was the perfect size for the bottom tier of my tear tray. So it does have holes in it because it was a wind chime. So I'm just using some spackle from the back to try to fill those in a little bit to make it a little prettier when we go ahead and paint this. So I'm just gonna try to get that dry. If you go in from the back like that, you don't have to go back in and sand it. So a little bit of a time saver. Then I'm going to do the red part of the watermelon with just a red Sharpie. I thought I would have a lot more control with the Sharpie than I would have with a paint pen to go around all of the letters there. I wanna make sure that I don't get any like red on them because I want to do those in a different color. So just kind of tracing 
on the inside of the lines and then just kind of filling it all together, kind of just going in one direction. And it kind of gives you like a um, painted effect. But again, with a little bit more control with the Sharpies. It almost stains the raw wood. You can actually see it the way that it stains the wood there. And then I'm gonna use a green paint pen to go around and do the rind of our watermelon. And it's got like two different layers of that. So I'm gonna go in with like a lighter color of green in a paint pen and do the middle layer there of our rind. Then I thought, I wanted like the base of it to be white, not that natural wood. So I'm gonna go in with a white paint pen and kind of do the background. That'll kind of tie it in with that white block that we're also doing on the tear tray. And then I kind of want the background of the summer word to be white as well. My paint pen was a little wore out, so I wasn't having the best luck here. I'm trying not to cover up the words because I want to be able to use that as a guide to paint that back on there. But again, I was getting a lot of streaking. I don't know if it was the ink coming off the wood that was giving that or if it was just my paint pen, but I just went over it with some white acrylic and just hope that I can kind of see it to paint that back on. <laughs> because I'm not gonna be that great with freehanding it. Then I wanted to bring in a touch of my blue, you know, uh, my custom blue shade. I have beachy blue everything, so I gotta have a little blue in there, right? And just painting vibes in that blue color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do summer in that blue color as well. And again, this part was a little tricky. If I wouldn't have painted that part white, it would have been a lot easier because I was trying to see where it says summer and I really covered up the outline a little bit more than I would like. But I'm doing my best here to do a cursive summer there. I could kind of see it. And then I'm gonna go in and kind of outline that so you can read that a little better because it was a little hard to read at this point. Just making sure I get my paint and pen dry first. And then I'm just using a black ballpoint pen and going over any of the areas, the outline that I got blue paint on to kind of give that a sharp edge. And then going on all these surfaces up here, going around all the edges to outline that paint and that made it a lot better. <laughs> and just outlining that. I'm not gonna put this sign on like another sign or anything like that. I kind of like there to be different shapes and sizes on my tear tray. And this was actually the perfect size to fit, but I just need it to stand up. Now I'm gonna use one of these little wood Jenga blocks from Five Below. It was a little too long though. So I just trimmed it down a little bit so that it wouldn't be obvious and glue that to the back. And you can use whatever you have any kind of wood block would do. And we have a little standing sign for our tear tray. So cute. Now I thought I could take this little wreath charm from the Dollar Tree with the butterfly on it and make this look like a fruit as well. It's perfect circle. It's a perfect height for my bottom tier as well. And I've already done a lot of watermelons. I've done a lime. And so I thought we could do an orange slice for this one. So there is a hole in it because um, it comes with a hanger. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that hole in. If you can't find the reef charms, you could always use like the chunky circles as well if it will fit on your tear tray. Mine was a tiny bit too tall. Now I don't want that butterfly to show through on my orange slice. So I'm gonna go in with some ivory chalk paint and just do kind of a thick coat over that to kind of mask that a little bit before we go in and paint this one orange. And I'm going in with, this is just a bright orange. I think it's called pumpkin acrylic paint. And I, it really reminded me the color of an orange. And I'm just gonna do one coat all over. And then I'm gonna use a white Sharpie um, paint pen and do my very best to paint a slice of an orange. So I did a circle 
Then I did a center and then I did it in half and then I did it into quarters. And then I'm gonna make each one of those quarters um, in half. And I think that's fairly correct. Then I'm gonna go in and kind of give that wedge shape by rounding all the corners to kind of make it look more like an orange. And kind of outline it. It wasn't perfect, but I think you can tell what I was going for. I think you can tell that I wanted that to be an orange slice. I'm so glad to be back crafting. As you guys know, we kind of got stuck on vacation with my husband getting sick. And so I'm glad to be back in my garage crafting for you guys. Okay, I wanted to do another fruit. I thought one of these frames um, from the Dollar Tree would make a perfect um, pineapple slice because it's already got the hole cut out the middle. So I'm gonna pop that off the stand. I'm just gonna use the wood part for my pineapple. But first I'm gonna have to remove the nails that were in there and the little um, metal pieces that hold the little picture frame on there as well. I'm just gonna pull those out with some pliers and we're gonna have the perfect shape for a pineapple slice. And I didn't have, to, the little orange stands up on its own so I didn't have to do any kind of a stand for that. That's gonna work perfectly. Now this raw wood's ready to go. All I have to do is paint it. I'm gonna use an acrylic paint. I think this is called goldenrod. Kind of reminded me of the color of pineapple. So I'm gonna go in with a brush and just paint that all around. I was kind of trying to give like a brush stroke. It kind of went on all uniform though because that raw wood really soaks in the paint. So that's gonna be a good base coat. I'm also gonna try to do the edges as well in case you can see those. And I think this is gonna be the final project there for my tear tray. And I go in with a paint pen and I try to do little lines all the way around to kind of give it that pineapple effect. The only problem I had here is that paint pen was way too close to my paint color. So you really could not tell what I just did. So I'm gonna go in with a lighter color. This is like a yellow paint pen. It's almost too different, but we're gonna make it work. And I'm just doing lines all the way around to give it that pineapple feel. And then to kind of mask that a little bit, I'm gonna go in and distress with that original goldenrod color to make that not quite as noticeable. But I still want you to see that pineapple effect that we got on there. And I thought this made a really cute little pineapple ring for our fruity tear tray. And I will need it to stand up. So I'm gonna use some little, um, a little mini Jenga block from the Dollar Tree and hot glue that to the back and we have a little pineapple slice sign for our tear tray. So easy. Okay, here is our completed tear tray with all of our fruit and summer decorations. I just love how this tear tray turned out. It's so cute. Did you know we have a private Facebook group? I'll post the link below. You're gonna be blown away by all the crafty beach bumps and their creativity over on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. My handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube and I would love to see you on any and all of those social media profiles. Okay, I wanted to do some more DIYs that would kind of go with my watermelon tear tray to fill in my cabinet for summer. And I thought this would be perfect. It says sweet summer sunshine. And it's like a mason jar with little fruit on it as well. You know I hate glitter and it's covered in glitter. So I'm going over the, the words with a paint pen. I found that that kind of tones down the glitter a little bit because it's so hard to get the glitter off of it. And I wanted to bring a little bit of my signature blue in there as well. So we're gonna do some aqua here for sweet. And this wasn't like real glittery, so this did help. And you could kind of um, still see it. I'm gonna go back and outline it with white so you make sure that you can't see any of that pink glitter that was under there. And just kind of clean it up a little bit 
just with a white paint pen. And that helped a lot. I'm gonna go over Sweet has glitter all over it. Sun Summer has glitter all over it. Sunshine has glitter all over it. And like the little wood fruit wedges that are on there too. Dollar Tree, the glitter. Why do you do this to me? Now, if you don't mind glitter, you can just use this as is and you are good to go. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do this one pink with a pink paint pen. Again, just trying to make that glitter a lot less noticeable. It really doesn't go with my vibe in my house. And I'm gonna re-outline them all in white too to kind of clean them all up. And this is the best that I can do to try to tone that down a little bit. I want to fill my cabinet with all like fruit, summer things, um, and give me that sweet summer vibe. Now the lime had like a little stick poking out of the top. I didn't really like that. So I kind of trimmed that off. So I'm just touching that up. I really like the little fruit wedges that are glued on there, but again, they're covered in glitter. So I'm gonna go over everything with some matte Mod Podge. That also helps to tone down the glitter a little bit because Dollar Tree is out of control with this glitter situation. <laughs> I know some of you guys like it, not me. So that helped a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of leave that as is. I'm not gonna try to fill the holes there on the top. Um, I, think, I think they're gonna be fine. I just need to make some way to make this into a standing sign instead of a hanging sign. So I'm gonna to glue together two of those Jenga blocks from Five Below. It's gonna give me a little bit of weight. And then I'm gonna glue that onto the back of our mug to make this a standing sign. And again, you can use whatever you have, any kind of a block or wood, or you could even use a plate holder to get these to stand up as well. And this easy DIY is ready to go. And this is how it looks next to my little watermelon tear tray on my shelf for summer. So cute. Okay, look at this sign. This is perfect. It's blue, my favorite color. It says, hello summer. It's got all the fruit on it. And it's a nice long skinny sign. I have the perfect shelf for this. Um, again, the word summer is in glitter, but it's actually not as bad as some of the other signs today. So I'm just going over it with um, one coat of matte Mod Podge to try to tone that down a little bit. And it's gonna give me a little bit of texture on this sign as well, which is gonna make it look a little bit better. I'm not gonna go over it with a paint pen or anything like that though. I think it's perfect as is. Now I want to convert this to a standing sign as well. So again, I'm gonna use some of those Jenga blocks from Five Below, and I'm just gonna glue one um, to the back of each sign to make this a standing sign. And I have a little shelf above where I put the tear tray and the mason mug that's going this is gonna fit absolutely perfect in. Isn't it cute? And it's perfect to bring in summer. And this is how it looks. It fits like a glove. Hello, summer. Okay. I have a few more little DIYs here. And this is so cute. It's a sweet summertime with a watermelon. You know, you could use this as a tear tray or as a, um, just a tray as well. If you can't find the napkins, it's very similar to what I did with the tear tray. And it has a lot of glitter on there. So I go in with my aqua paint pen and I, I attempt to do the lettering again. There was so much glitter on here though, it was kind of tearing up my paint pen, but I'd already committed to at least do this word. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that one in blue and leave time in green, that's fine. And the summer is outlined in glitter as well. And to try to tone it all down, again, matte Mod Podge over all of it. Again, this one probably had the most glitter out of any of the signs today. But it's so cute. I absolutely love this. This would be really cute hanging on a, like a summer reef as well. 
And it had so much glitter that I'm going to do two coats of the Matte Mod Podge just to try to help a little bit. And that did tone it down. Now to cover the little hole in the top, I'm just going to do a simple bow with some Dollar Tree twine. And it'll give a little fun touch to the front top of this as well. And again, I want to convert this from a, um, a hanging sign into a standing sign for my cabinet. So once that's done, I'm going to just glue some more. You know I love those Jenga blocks from the dome. Five below. I'm going to do two of those on the back. I get these every year. This year they raised the price a little bit. I think it was $12 for a great big huge box of these. But definitely they're so versatile. I use these all of the time. I love them. And I'm just going to glue those on the back. And now we have a standing sign. And again, you could use a plate holder or whatever you have to stand that up as well. And this is how it looks on my top shelf in my cabinet. It's so cute for summer. Okay, are you ready for the last DIY? Look at this cute sign from the Dollar Tree. Sweet summer, fruit stand, and juice bar. It is perfect. It's a directional arrow sign. But I don't want it to be a hanging sign. I want it to actually be a directional arrow sign, um, like on a wood post. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it attached together for now. And again, it has glitter because Dollar Tree does. And I'm going to go over all of that with some Mod Podge to try to tone that down as well. Not too bad on this one. But the colors and the words, it's very bright and very pretty. It's going to go great with these other fruit summer projects today. Now I'm going to use one of these long heavy duty signs from the Dollar Tree to make a post. Um, I measured about how tall I wanted it to be. And then I'm going to cut this down to size so that this will fit on my shelf. So it doesn't matter which one you get. It can be any of these long signs. I'm going to cut it right about there with my saw. And I will have a few of an extra piece left over. So what I'm going to do is take that extra piece and cut it in half to try to make a base um, that we can use to stand this up. Now the reason I left these all together is because um, it's going to make it easier for spacing and when I go ahead to attach it to the sign. I want the sign to be covered in burlap, and so I don't really want the writing to be visible through the burlap, so I'm going to go over it with just a coat of ivory chalk paint to try to mask that writing. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just don't want you to see the writing through the burlap, and I'm going to use some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree to cover the front of the little post. So it's a little wider than um, I need it to be. So I'm just going to trim that down to size. And then I'm going to Mod Podge that on. I've seen that some people are finding like the rolled burlap of their Dollar Trees now. I haven't seen that at any of my Dollar Trees, but I will definitely keep my eye open for that because I always have to buy that at Walmart. This is the only size I ever find at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go ahead and do the extra pieces as well, just cutting those down to size. And then we're going to Mod Podge those on. I thought I could glue those to each side of that to kind of make a base that's going to stand up our sign. Just making sure it is good and secure. Sometimes you have to put a little Mod Podge on top as well to get that to stick down. Now it's ready to put this together. This is kind of why I left the ribbon still on there so that I could space that out kind of evenly. It's just going to make it easier to attach it to my post. And I'm going to glue that down to the burlap covered sign with some hot glue. One sign at a time. And I'll still be able to get to the ribbon parts to take that off because that's going to be on the side. And I always think these signs look better standing like this. So just glue all three of those down. Now I can go ahead and use my pliers to pull the staples out of the back and pull that ribbon off now that I have them all glued on. 
Just kind of a time saver to leave those on for now. And I love these fruit summer signs from the Dollar Tree. They're so cute and festive for summer. And I just love how they complement the watermelon tear tray that we made today. Now, this is my plan is to attach the extra pieces on each side, hoping that the weight of that would give me a nice base for a sign. I had kind of taken the bottom string of burlap off the middle piece, so I kind of did that same thing on the sides to make it look more uniform. And then I'm just gonna attach that with hot glue. And this totally worked. It is totally strong enough to stand the whole sign up. And it's pretty sturdy as well. So that's how it stands. Now, the only thing I thought I would break up some of that burlap there with a little bit more color, and I'm gonna use some of this plaid pastel. I think this is called gnome ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut a piece just to kind of break up all that burlap on the front and to give me another little texture and color on the front of our sign. And we have our little fruit directional arrow sign Perfect for the cabinet, and this is our last project for today, and this is how it turned out. I want to thank you so much for watching today, and we are getting ready for the final reveal. But first, I want to give a huge super thanks to the following Crafty Beach Bums for giving me super thanks underneath my videos. It's a way to tip your favorite creator as little as $2 to show your appreciation and to support your favorite crafter. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It really helps a small channel like mine and it helps me buy supplies from the Dollar Tree. Thank you. Okay, are you ready for the final reveal? Let's go.